Mitchell, she'll pull up. Here's a three. She's got it. She got it back. That'll be your eighth rebound. She's got it. A foul. Mitchell getting inside. Mitchell lays it in. Fox goes back to work and lays it in off the glass. Vivian spots free, and Vivian knocks it down. What an effort by Danielle Robinson. There you go, Big T. It's been 18 days since the Indiana Fever last played a home game, but this afternoon they return to Indianapolis and their new home for the rest of the season. Indiana Farmers Coliseum for a rematch with the Chicago Sky. It's the Fever and the Sky. WNBA basketball today on feverbasketball.com. And we welcome you inside our new home for 2021. Alongside Bria Goss, I'm Pat Boylan. Adjustments have been the name of the game in the WNBA ever since COVID hit as Indiana picks up and moves their home floor midseason. Bria, what's the key to taking home court advantage with them? One of the biggest things about home court advantage is just the opportunity to play in front of the fans. Like we had with COVID season last year, it was difficult not to have those fans from the wobble, but now Indiana being the basketball state that it is, home court advantage is a huge key, Pat. Well, the Fever and Sky are playing in a rematch here this afternoon of Wednesday night's game. Chicago took that one, a 16-point victory for the Sky. But the Fever trending in the right direction, and most notably from the Mitchells. Tiffany and Kelsey combined for 44 points on Wednesday, a season-high 20 for Tiffany, a season-high 24 for Kelsey. Kelsey, who had been struggling with her shot a little bit, hit six threes on Wednesday night, and Indiana almost certainly going to need Bria those two playing at a high level here again today. Absolutely. I think one of the big keys for both the Mitchells is that they continue to have the confidence to attack. Even if the ball doesn't go in one or two times, just being able to step up and hit the big plays uh, is something that they're always used to do anyway. So I enjoy seeing the Mitchells play, and they're going to come out here and have another great game. It was Kelsey Mitchell's second 20-point game of the season. She had eight of those last season. We'll see if she can carry that momentum here into Indiana Farmers Coliseum. Well, on Wednesday, Chicago got a major weapon back in their arsenal, a two-time MVP, Candace Parker. She had missed eight games with an ankle injury, now struggled a little bit, one of nine from the floor. Some of that rust is to be expected for a player that has missed three weeks of time. She'll go again tonight for Chicago. From an Indiana standpoint, how do you keep a player that's that well-rounded from beating you? Well, with Candace Parker, you know, she's an All-American all around. Uh, but just being able to uh, make it hard for her, just continue the pressure, just making sure that they're doing the little things right, containing her, um, I think is a big start. Just playing her early, I think, would be a huge benefactor for the Fever. Well, the Indiana Fever trying to get back on track this afternoon. They hope their new home will help them accomplish that. We've got the starting lineups in the opening tip from Indiana Farmers Coliseum when we return on feverbasketball.com. Indiana Fever Basketball is brought to you by Ascension St. Vincent. Listening to you, caring for you. And by Ortho Indy, official orthopedic provider of the Indiana Fever. Look at downtown Indianapolis. The Fever returning home for the first time in 18 days to a new home. Indiana Farmers Coliseum will host Indiana for the remainder of 2021. It's the Fever and the Sky for a rematch from Wednesday night. A look at tonight's starting lineup. And just like Wednesday night, Marianne Stanley going with this front court. That includes Jantel Lavender and Jessica Breeland. I think this lineup has a lot of experience. Um, Tierra McCowan, although she's having a, a pretty good season, we'll now get to see um, how the team is doing without her on the starting lineup and just kind of feeding the energy that they start out with. I think it's a great pull from the coach. So congrats to uh, Marianne Stanley. It's game number 100 of her WNBA coaching career for Marianne Stanley, the highly decorated college and professional women's head coach and on the other sideline that's james wade he's in his third year in chicago he's also the general manager of cheryl 
Reeve Disciple as we are underway here from the fairgrounds in 2021. Courtney Vandersloot, the league's leading assister, and she has done that six of the last seven years as Copper gets inside, lost the handle. It'll stay here with Chicago. Indiana looking for better starts. They trailed by double digits in the first quarter in four of those five games on the road trip. Indiana's one win this season came at home at Bankers Live Fieldhouse. Stephanie Dolson, that's a deep two, rattles out. Parker with the offensive rebound, and Parker with the putback. She hit just one shot on Wednesday night, but the two-time MVP, even at age 35, certainly still a major force here in the WNBA and in her 14th season. And there is Parker knocking it away from Breland. I don't think Parker has skipped a beat since, uh, really since she started playing. Um, just being able to watch her, at, you know, as a young star, um, watch her grow and mature the game and not skip the beat, not take any plays off, I think it's so huge for such a, a, a good veteran player. Danielle Robinson got by Copper and gets to the rim. Danielle Robinson leads second leading stealer. She also is 17th in assists. Robinson had just five points on Wednesday. As Vandersloot sets up a rolling Dolson. Chicago scored 92 points in that game on Wednesday. The most they've scored all season and defensive improvements have been the name of the game for Indiana this year. The Fever enter as last in the WNBA on the defensive end as Kelsey Mitchell gets free on a backdoor cut. Coming off her season high, 24 points on Wednesday nights. And Candace Parker delivers a three on the other end. Early five points for Parker, who had just three in the first matchup between these two teams, was a little rusty after missing eight games, but looks back in prime form here to play in game number three as Mitchell off target for Indiana. So far, the defensive intensity uh, is you want to be able to start the game at such a high level, especially with a team. Uh, like Chicago, just kind of put your foot down and make a statement. And, and I think that will just kind of continue to feel the offense as well. That's a blocking foul on Diamond Shields. She goes down holding the back of her head, which unfortunately for her is a familiar sight. She went down in the fourth quarter on Wednesday in Chicago and was holding that neck, head, back area. She did not return in that game. Ingrid said she is okay, but already has Taking a fall here. And the second of two straights between the Fever and the Sky. Indiana has eight of these series this year. That's the most in the WNBA. Mitchell got her pass deflected by Parker. And they'll call a foul there as well. And Stanley saying she wants to pick up the defensive intensity and on the offensive end, get into their sets a bit quicker. Yeah, especially like in the transition game. You know, just being able to control the game uh, offensively by getting a couple easy baskets, uh, transition offense, good defense to turn into transition offense. I think it's so important for the receiver to continue um, to stay aggressive on offense. Kalia Copper called for the foul there. Jump ball, I should say. So it'll be Copper versus Lavender. Chicago Sky enter this afternoon at 3-7 and seven on the season as Parker continues on the attack. Oh, we've seen an aggressive Candace Parker here so far. After she hit just one shot on Wednesday. It is clearly a point of emphasis for Chicago to get her going. What a great, great hesitation, uh, an explosive move by, by Parker. Sleeper had to, you know, Make sure they understand where the ball is at, get back on defense, but being able to stop a player and stop a player early, kind of get in her head, give her some some problems, um, and no easy bucket for, for Candace is going to be huge for the team to continue to play the game. 
Candace Parker, by the way, just one assist behind Teresa Weatherspoon for 12th all-time in league history. She's going to go down a lot like Tamika Catchings in the top 10 of four, five, six different categories in WNBA history, both Tennessee Volunteers and two of the most well-rounded players this league has ever seen. Lavender gets the switch on to Vandersloot, turns her shoulder, can't get that one to go. Breland pulls down the offensive rebound for Indiana. Breland on the shot fake, driving at Parker, and couldn't get the roll. Oh, Breland, though, she came in and poked it away. Tiffany Mitchell snatches it and knocks down the jump shots. Mitchell with 20 points on Wednesday night, a season high, and now there's two steals for Breland on back-to-back -back possessions. She's just all over the place, Pat. You know, she got the offensive rebound, the steal, and another steal. That's the energy and the type of intensity that the people need to play with. Mitchell bounces for Tiffany. Scoop shot won't fall. Leah Copper, one of the league's most dynamic wings. Such a great slasher. So, too, is Diamond to Shields. There's DeShields, first scoring of the afternoon. DeShields averages 13 points per game. She and Copper are their two leading scores. They combine for 27 per game for what is a really well-rounded group in Chicago. Mitchell driving on Parker, finds some space, and Mitchell with a bank shot. You don't see her that open too many times, just being able to take advantage um, of those op open opportunities that she has and knocking the shot down. Vandersloot off balance. Here's Robinson. Gets inside, couldn't finish on the reverse. And Breland battling with Parker. Oh, it's been a great start for Jessica Breland. And now Tiffany Mitchell drives inside. Working on Dolson, fades, fires, and gets the roll. That was a great offensive possession. Uh, just being able to stay on top of the ball. Get, you know, do the little things right. It's a 6-0 run for the Indiana Fever. Chicago will take a timeout. The Sky leading it by one here in the first from the fairground. Indiana Farmers Coliseum, our home for the rest of 2021 as Bankers Live Fieldhouse undergoes renovation. Chicago leads it by one here midway through the first. Next week, the Fever get a double dose of the defending WNBA champs. The Seattle Storm, Sue Bird, and the Storm are in town for a pair of games. Tuesday and Thursday, games will be at 7 o'clock. Tickets available at feverbasketball.com slash tickets. Dana Evans has checked in. So, too, as Allie Quigley, one of the league's knockdown shooters, and she buries a three right off the bench. Chicago's bench outscored Indiana's 40 to 9 on Wednesday night. And Marianne Stanley talking about the need for more production from that group and getting it right there from Lindsay Allen. What a great downhill attack move. That's something that we want to see from all the Fever guards, not just the Mitchells. And just kind of using the screen to her ability, recognizing the play, uh, and get to the basket and get the and one. There are probably defensive adjustments that Mary Ann Stanley would like to make, but you at least like the start here from Indiana. The Fever had fallen down by double digits in four of their last five. That other game, they got down by nine points in the first quarter. So first quarters have been a challenge for Marianne Stanley's group, but the Fever Trail by just one here. In their opener at the Coliseum. You see Mitchell with the assignment on Quigley. Ray Stevens has checked in as well. Here's Dana Evans playing in her ninth game as a WNBA pro, and with the shot clock winding down, Stephanie Dolson knocks down a three. That was a great. Great shot by the big girl, you know, an even better pass by Dana Evans. She's from Gary, Indiana, so I know she's uh, excited to be back here in, in her home state. Lavender looking inside for McCowan, who turns and lays it in. That powerful post move from Tierra McCowan, who's making a little bit of an adjustment here. This is just her second game coming off the bench. One of the big things about Big T is making sure that she's involved early. When she's in there getting rebounds, steals, uh, put backs. That's when her whole game kind of transforms. Stephanie Dolson putting the moves on right there. McCowan stayed right with her. 
But Dolson able to finish. Quick shot, Kelsey Mitchell. She's had it going here lately. Mitchell with 24 points on Wednesday. Busted out of that slump with six three-pointers and has had it going inside the arc. And that's Dana Evans. One thing we always talk about, Kelsey Mitchell is, you know, her relentlessness of just making sure she wants to get those good shots up. I don't think she sees a bad shot. She's going to continue to take them whether she makes or misses them. Mitchell gets the switch on to Stevens. Mitchell on the drive, gets inside and right to the rim. And Mitchell, who hit six three-pointers on Wednesday, really been attacking the paint here in the first quarter today. What a great move and great read. You know, they're, they're really playing her tied up in the three, which is giving her that opportunity to go by the defense. Indiana, the league's number two rebounding team as McCowan keeps Chicago one and done. And Quigley called for the foul there. And Tiffany Mitchell, you get her in transition. You get Kelsey Mitchell here on these mismatches. Both of the Mitchells really where Indiana focusing in on and trying to get more production from. Absolutely. I, I'm pretty sure Marion Stanley is making sure that they watch the film, kind of watch the holes in the defense of where they can attack or pull up or even shoot the three a little more and, and just get into the rim. Victoria Vivians has checked in for Indiana as well. Jantel Lavender. The only starter who remains on the floor. Lavender, of course, a former member of the Chicago Sky as Allen gets it inside to McCowan, and she won't miss from there. Indiana establishing Tierra McCowan now in the post here in the first quarter. Evans got the mismatch, step back three. Woodley going to be called for the over-the-back foul. There's a couple quick ones on Allie Quigley, who is playing in just her fifth game of the season. She missed six with a hamstring injury, and so the Fever are into the penalty. And the rookie fourth overall pick, Kaiser Gondrzic, will shoot her first free throws in the WNBA. Gondrzic, who is the daughter of Grant, who played a year for Phoenix. And for Los Angeles, the Clippers in the NBA. She comes from quite a basketball lineage. Her mom, Lisa, won a title at Louisiana Tech. And her sister played at Michigan State. Kaiser was Miss Basketball in the state of Michigan back in her high school days. And went fourth overall. She wears the number four forts. It's her first two free throws as a pro. Quigley driving on Gondrzic, gets inside, and Quigley will go to the line for a pair of free throws. Allie Quigley, number 22 overall pick back in 2008. Really a story of perseverance. Played on four different teams in her first four years, including a very brief stint in Indiana. She played three games with the Fever, and for a brief moment there, was the all-time leading scorer in Sky history. She was passed by her wife, Courtney Vandersloot, while Quigley was injured earlier this year. So those two have quite the battle going on right now. Courtney Vandersloot is 54 points up on Allie Quigley for the Sky's all-time leading scores. They are one and two, and that just kind of feels appropriate because when you think of the Sky, you think of those two, I think, first and foremost. Absolutely. It, it, I wonder what the conversation is at home. And they actually had the opportunity to play overseas together, too, um, on a very, very good uh, team in Russia. So I, I wonder really how those conversations go at home. Like, who's doing the dishes, if I drop more points, or whatever the case may be. Lauren Cox has checked in for the first time this afternoon, picked up her pivot foot. She's a player that really still looking to establish herself in year number two. She dealt with so many challenges in her rookie season, not just playing a rookie year in the bubble. She dealt with COVID. She is the WNBA's first ever type one diabetic and has been dealing with a foot injury as well this year. So she has had more than her slate of challenges. 
Suns. The Fever give up another three-pointer, and that's really been an area where Marianne Stanley wants to improve on. Chicago has hit five of their six from out there in the first quarter. Indiana has yet to attempt a three as they go back inside, and McCowan gets the position on Dolson. What a pass. I think she saw that pass early. Uh, Tierra McCowan was working down there the whole possession, and she was a few steps out of that three-point line and still was able to make that pass. That was a, a great pass. Evans cut off there by Gondrasic, and they will say there was contact as well. A couple of rookies going at it. Here is that pass you're talking about. And what a finish, too. I don't want to <laughs> uh, downplay McCallum's energy down there, but that was a great use of her body to get the, get the bucket. Six points in four minutes for Tierra McCowan, who's coming off the bench here for her second game this season. She started first 10 of the year. Dana Evans, who started her career in Dallas and was a part of, it was really kind of an awkward trade. Shyla Heal, who had only been in Chicago for a couple of weeks, was sent to Dallas and then ultimately waived the eighth overall pick. McCowan, she'll take it herself, charging to the rim. How about that for Big T? You do not see that every day. That was poised. That looked like actually some guard play from, from the big girl. That was a great one dribble attack and, and finish at the rim. Usually a very good sign for Indiana when they can establish Tierra McCowan. She's got eight points in four minutes here in the first quarter. And Cox there comes up with a deflection. And what a play by Allen to keep it alive. She will heave. It won't fall. And we are through a high scoring first quarter in our first game from the Coliseum. It's the sky by two. But Tierra McCowan, Jantel Lavender, happy with Indiana's improved starts here on a Saturday afternoon. Tonight's game night special celebrates Pride Month with a $12 t-shirt. It's available right now by visiting feverteamstore.com. Support the Indiana Fever and support Pride Month. Get the best prices all at feverteamstore.com. As Gondrasic lines up an early three, that's off targets. That's Indiana's first three-point attempt of the afternoon. They did not take one in the first quarter. Well, Indiana down by just two. That three-point line has been a challenge for them all season, has been a challenge so far. But Allen continues to attack. This is the best I think we've seen Lindsay Allen look in a fever uniform. Yeah, she's just taking advantage of those opportunities. She saw that the big girl, uh, Dolson, was on her, switched on her, and used her speed and her athleticism to get by her. Parker shot fakes the three, finds Dolson, who connects. And Stephanie Dolson, who's playing in game number five in the WNBA in this season. Uh, there's not really any rust for her, though. She was over with the three-on-three -three Olympic team, which qualified the Americans for the Olympics here coming up shortly. Congratulations to her and that group as a Gondrasic three will be waved off. And a foul off the ball going against Chicago. That was a great screen. A rec uh, she recognized the mismatch, was able to size up Dolson and just one quick step by her. That's hard to recover, so good job for Lizzie Allen there. 27-point first quarter, the most the Fever have scored in quarter number one this season. Got that foul, by the way, on Quigley, who's picked up three of them here in the early going. And Lauren Cox, who scored just four points this season, but when she's at her best, can extend that range out to the three-point line. Showing it right there as the Fever take a second quarter lead. And Copper on the attack on the other end will go right back to the line. When Indiana drafted Lauren Cox, it was things like this that they anticipated her being able to provide. Yeah, the big girl out of Baylor. I know I remember seeing her hit uh, a lot of those threes from the, from the stripe and just being able to have that confidence to uh, do it here for the Indiana Fever this season. I think it's going to be huge for her game and just to keep on expanding. Um, and one thing I do want to point out, Pat, there's not a single starter uh, on the floor right now. And I know I've, I've seen big numbers from the starters as far as minutes goes. And I think it's important to get that bench involved um, and making sure that they're doing their part. And I think today they've really stepped up and took it upon themselves to do that. Indiana turns it over there. Already 13, uh, 18 points, I should say, off of that bench. 
Indiana was outscored 40-9 in Chicago on Wednesday. So that bench already has provided more production here in just over a quarter than they did in their last matchup. Double. That's, that's what we want to see, especially at the, the early uh, beginning of the game. Parker looking for space inside, cut off by Cox. Good defense there by Lauren. Stayed with the two-time MVP. Topper pulled down the rebound, battling with McCowan. We have a whistle. And a jump ball is the call. Indiana, the league's second best rebounding team. Chicago does it well also. They are fourth in the WNBA. And Lauren Cox starting to look, I think what she would say is a little bit more like herself, but hampered with those injuries and those ailments in the early portion of her career. And that would really give Indiana a boost if they could get Lauren Cox looking like the player that they feel like they drafted back in 2020. I 100% agree. And just seeing her develop and just kind of get more and more and more confidence as the season goes by, I think it's going to be a huge key for her and her development. Chicago is 3-7 and seven on the season. James Wade's group has dug themselves into a little bit of a hole. It doesn't really tell the story, though. They've Dealt with a ton of injuries. It's about every close game they've been in, they've lost. As McCowan gets it back inside, and it blocked by Parker. McCowan goes back up. That one's short as well. This is where Chicago is so dangerous to Shields running the floor to Azare Stevens. There might not be a pair of wing players in the WNBA more athletic than to Shields and Copper. I agree, and that downhill attack mode that they are on for the full 40 minutes of the game is, is huge. As Kelsey Bishop comes out, hits that big shot, she's still hot from Wednesday night, I guess. Indiana has sorely needed big production from Kelsey Mitchell. She was sixth in the league in scoring last year. And got off to a really tough start shooting the ball. Not right away. She played pretty well in Indiana's first few games as Shields gets inside off balance shots. As the Fever went on that road trip, Mitchell went ice cold. But played well against Chicago. Maybe her best game of the season on Wednesday. Hit six three-pointers. That's the big looking to play catch underneath. Freeland can't hook up with McCowan. And especially this Fever team, which has been shorthanded from the three-point line. Indiana has been outscored from the perimeter in every single game so far this season. There's a lot of pressure on Kelsey Mitchell to deliver. I agree, especially with the start from the three points that she has started with, and she knows she can knock it down. I'm pretty sure she has gotten up twice as many as she usually does just to get that rhythm back. Freeland on the drive. That shot too long. Got the offensive rebound and drew the foul. That is already the fifth offensive rebound for Indiana here this afternoon. When you look at the Fever when they're at their best, that New York game to start the year, the Washington win, Mitchell's shot is falling, Fever dominating on the glass. And so far, a lot of those trends, Indiana has been solid on the glass here so far today. And Mitchell's shot certainly is falling. She's hit five of her six attempts. And Jessica Breeland's just done a little bit of everything. I agree. And I know I've talked about leadership uh, in the earlier games this season and who was going to step up from that leadership standpoint. And the fans were probably thinking I was talking about scoring, but I'm talking about just the, the grit of the team. I think Breland is, is comfortably stepping up into that, that position. She likes playing her former team, Jessica Breland. She had four blocks, three steals on Wednesday. A couple of free throws there, Indiana. Two-point lead is their largest. DeShields gets right back inside and pushes that one home. I'm in DeShields with four points here in the first half tonight. Good to see her back on the floor. After she took a tough spill late in that Chicago game on Wednesday. And Parker with a good hands tipped it away from McCowan. And DeShields running the floor lays it in. And a timeout by Marianne Stanley. A quick little 4-0 burst from Diamond to Shields off of the Candace Parker deflection. Chicago leads it by two. Inside Indiana Farmers Coliseum, some extracurriculars between Candace Parker and Tierra McCowan. They both received double technicals. As Parker came up with the steal there, McCowan felt like she was fouled. This is how we went into break.
pretty intense, <laughs> if you ask me. Um, and I know Candace is uh, uh, just an all-out competitor. Um, and so anything, especially from a younger player, you know, she was going to hold her ground there. <laughs> Lindsay Allen with five points and three assists already here in the first half. Breland faces up and knocks it down right over Hebert. Jessica Breland really starting to come into her own here in a fever uniform. Four points, four rebounds, and assists, a block, two steals. She's done all that in seven minutes. Anderson tries to free herself from Allen. Here's Parker. She hits a three. And Chicago has been red hot from the perimeter here this afternoon. They've hit six of their seven. A couple already for Parker, who enters double digits. Breland trying to get by Hebert. Sets up McCowan. And over the back. And we called on Hebert. Breland just getting back in there and just doing all the little things right. You know, she's only played uh, seven, seven and a half minutes now, and she has a full stat sheet. And I think uh, any young player that's watching, just pay attention to the deep, to the little details because those things matter. <laughs> what she's doing, I think, is really holding the, the team up right now and kind of getting them fired up. Worth noting, McCowan did not start this afternoon, but she's played more minutes than Lavender or Breland. So this is not necessarily a demotion. It's Mary Ann Stanley trying to mix things up. Oh, and how about Lindsay Allen? She just looks shot out of a cannon here this afternoon. And Vandersloot on the other end, and McCowan denies her. What a move by Allen. You know, just staying poised, and that's just cone drills right there. Reading the defense, slowing up, exploding, finishing, extending at the rim. That's all the things that you want to see. And she kind of got beat there a little bit at the end, but you can count on Big T to clean up, to clean up the mess. Cowan with eight points. A couple of rebounds here in the first half. Marianne Stanley has transitioned her with that second unit. Breland battling with Hebert. Good hands by Hebert. Somehow Breland kept away with it. And now Breland going to be charged with the offensive foul. Got that elbow up. Oh, you know what? Candace Parker is really fuming. Time to Shields took an elbow to the neck. And this is just Breland battling. And she gets to Shields up high. Certainly no ill intent there. Right. I think just the. Yeah, the size difference kind of got her a little bit on the on the neck there, but really the shield is kind of taking the the back end of all these uh, parts of the house here. Anderslow bounces, Dolson had it blocked again. Danielle Robinson turns it right back over for the Fever. Erob played just five minutes as Allen came in. And that bench was playing so well. Marianne Stanley given that second unit a little bit more run than she has in previous games. In fact, Allen played just five minutes on Wednesday, ten minutes already this afternoon. I think that's so important. Um, getting in there, and if it's working, the second string is working, keep them in there, and uh, it is not full them. But I think that just being able to go, you know, nine, ten players deep was definitely going to pay off in the long run of the season. This is certainly the Candace Parker that Chicago imagined getting. She's dealt with injury as Mitchell gets inside and draws the foul. Anthony Dolson doesn't like the call. Parker played in that first game and then in shoot around. Going into game number two, tweaked her ankle, missed eight games. Certainly a player like her, you don't want to rush her back. But Chicago really struggled with her out of the lineup. They lost seven straight games. Now nearly all of them were down to the wire. A couple of those in overtime. And they lost on what's probably been the highlight of the WNBA season so far, that Kia Nurse midcourt buzzer beater. But nonetheless, Chicago at three and seven. Still a lot of season to go, but Kind of an inflection point, you feel like, for James Wade's group because they can't afford to dig that hole a whole lot deeper than they currently are in. I agree, especially when it 
mean, we still have a lot of basketball to play, but you know, when you look at the long run of the season, you want to make sure you get those easy uh, early games or those close games to pick up. It's really going to be able to pay off. Missed assignment there from Indiana as Dolson rolls free. Dolson in the double digits. She's got 11 points. Parker called for the foul. You can see she sees opportunities, Candace, when McCowan has the ball to try to tip that away from her, come up with a steal. Yeah, I think this is actually, you know, to go back on when they were a little uh, into it a little bit uh, a few minutes ago, that was kind of a similar play there. And this time they were able to, to call it. Now she's able to go to the line of shoot, too. Candace didn't like the call, but a nice shot there from our group was clear contact. Send McCowan to the line. She misses her first. McCowan, a 68% free throw shooter. Fourth in the league in rebounding. 11th in blocks already done. Plenty of that here so far today. Splits the two free throws. Been a competitive one here as Indiana has returned home. Either team has led by more than five. Anderson leaves it for Dolson, juggling with it. Dolson able to save it. Nice play, but the Shields gives it right back. Mitchell is fouled. And this is where Chicago's gotten themselves into a little bit of trouble. As Indiana goes back into the penalty, the place where they spent a lot of that first quarter in. And Tiffany Mitchell will be shooting free throws when we return, looking to tie things up from Indiana Farmers Coliseum. So good for the Fever to be back in Indianapolis. 18 straight days between home games. They switch venues. That home court advantage has led to improved play here for Indiana this afternoon. The Fever and Anthem are honoring champions in the community through the Indiana Fever Anthem Assists Award. For details or to nominate your community champion, visit feverbasketball.com slash anthem assists. So Mitchell, who was fouled after coming up with that steal, will head to the line for a couple of free throws at 87% this season. And Tiffany... Right now, just four points shy of Shavante Zealous for sixth all-time in Fever history. So now just a three-pointer shy for moving into sixth all-time. Shavante, I think, probably in my top three of favorite Fever players all-time. And you know what? She's an even better person. It's so funny because I feel like I say that about a lot of the Fever players, but just the character of these girls. I was had the opportunity to um, not only meet, but I played against her when I was in Israel my second year, and she is just an absolute great competitor. All around just great. So I, I, I miss her here at the Fever, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so much fire, so much spunk. Robinson open for three, that won't fall. Robinson and Copper got tangled up on the other end, and Daniel Robinson lost a shoe. As Chicago goes four on three, Dolson, there was a whistle. I think that whistle was off the ball, and right now, Tim Green has said it came before the shot, I believe. A three point problem for Indiana remains intact. Chicago has taken eight threes, made seven of them. See the foul there coming before the shot. And I think that was a, a smart play, a smart foul. You know, uh, Robinson lost the shoe, so they were down a few numbers. So just to get him before the shot goes, I think that was a smart play. There's another foul as Dolson rolling to the rim, and we'll see if they call this in the act of shooting. Indiana still had a couple of fouls to give. They're going to say this wasn't shooting, and I tend to agree with that. Dolson uh, felt like she was shooting, but it looked like there was no clear upward motion. She tried to come down with that rebound. It almost would have had to have been like a, a volleyball kind of tap. Right. It, I think they're arguing that it was a, a tip in, but that could have very easily just been a grab from the rebound and just kind of hit on the way down. So. Mitchell comes in to help on Parker. Shot clock down to five. 
Breland got a hand in there. Look at the defense from Jessica Breland. Oh, and they'll call a foul. And we'll say they did not give Candace Parker room to land to Breland. And that's unfortunate because she could not have played that better and forced an air ball. Have to leave room to land. Let's see. You can tell there, couldn't on that angle. I keep on following the ball there, but it was a great defensive possession. Uh, just being able to use your hands and maybe a little bit of a makeup call, but she sold it. Yeah, I'll give it to Candace Parker. She really sold the, the play. This is kind of a tough rule to litigate. Oftentimes, you will see officials trying to make a tough determination between whether it was even a foul at all or whether this should be flagrant. And the rule is you have to give room to land for the player. A better look at it here, I think. Oh, that's... Uh, it's certainly not a flagrant, I don't think. That seems questionable at best. Now, oftentimes, when you see this call, the player comes down, the shoe is standing right under the player. Right. They come down and hit the shoe. I mean, there was maybe a little contact there, but give Parker credit. Uh, she is one of the smartest players that's ever played this game. Absolutely. And you feel that foot down there. You see that foot down there. And I'm not saying there wasn't contact, but she did an excellent job of selling it. And that's a huge call in this moment. You have either an air ball and the fever are off and running, or you have three free throws and perhaps even more. There's Cheryl Flores on the right, Tim Green to the left. Yeah, you know, we see that a lot more in the in the NBA than we do w, WNBA. Um, but just being able to recognize how close the defense was and, and I mean, Parker has, I know she has worked out with some of the best of the best of the game and just being able to learn and put that into our game, I think is, is really special. It can make it tough when you're a defender and you're already swarming the player. It's almost like you have to move your feet away from them as they come down, which is not a natural defensive movement. And you completely understand the rule. We saw, you mentioned the NBA, Kawhi Leonard get injured from this that kept him out for almost a year. Right. And that can be such a dangerous play. Right. But it's such a fine line, and it's so tough to officiate. It's such a tough decision to make. Because where is natural landing position? And they are going to upgrade this to a flagrant. So wow. consider me a little surprised. But at the same point, you see calls like that. As we get one more look at it here, Let's see if you can tell. A flagrant. I don't even think she knew that Candace fell, let alone uh, intentionally try to make her fall. So, you know, I, I, I know I, especially as a player, always give the officials a hard time during the games, but I know they try to do their best and, and try to make the best of their, their, their game, their situation. Well, and that's what I mean by the middle ground there. Right. It was tough to see in that angle, but I think there's a possibility that she didn't even make contact with Bree. So you've got such a small margin of error that's going to decide three free throws and the ball versus an air ball and the fever are out and running. I mean, that is a massive, massive call. Right. And you can see why Breland's upset. And you need to protect the player. You see, you know, when players get their elbows up more often than not, that goes to player safety. But that's one of those that's right on that fine line. And Tough whistle there for the Fever. And Chicago now all of a sudden has their largest lead, and Dolson's open in the corner. Indiana has not defended the perimeter well here this afternoon. Chicago 7 of 9 from out there. Mitchell on the drive. Felt like she drew some contact way off target. Hopper going through Robinson and an offensive foul. Robinson stood her ground. This is one aspect. B. Rob is so smart and has such a good feel for the game. She's always at the top of the charges taken lists every single year. 
you know, that was that was my thing, especially at the University of Kentucky, just being able to um, get the team fired up from a defensive standpoint. You know, charges is such a – I mean, you sacrifice your body. Uh, it's, it's not an easy thing to do, but it's definitely necessary, especially when the team might be in a shooting slump or having got a, having, wasn't able to get the, the ball where they need to go. Mitchell continues to have some success feeding McCowan down there in the post. Cowan got the foul call on Dolson. Well, Dolson's arguing it, but the alternative is McCowan lays it in. So I think for Chicago, that's probably the better of the two results, as McCowan is a 68% free throw shooter. One of two from the line today. Comes up empty on that trip. And kind of a streaky year for her. She really struggled in the early going from the foul line. But got those percentages right back to where she's used to them. Parker has the mismatch on to Vivian's backdoor cut. That's Copper. And Copper will go to the line for a couple of free throws. She couldn't finish inside. <laughs> What a good read by Parker. She was able to uh, back down uh, Vivens there and still be able to see the, the open uh, cutter. I think with McCallum, she just has to keep on getting better on just being able to see the ball and see your man because with good players like Parker, that's going to be um, an easy two points or an and one every time. And one dynamic that makes Chicago so tough, they do not have a bad free throw shoot. They shoot it at 87% as a team. And it's best in the WNBA, and that would be right around the best mark ever. Washington did that in their title season a couple of years ago. Mitchell off the screen, gets inside. Vivian's open three. She knocks it down. That's a good sign for Indiana. Victoria Vivian's they struggled with her shot. She's still trying to get her feet underneath her after missing nearly all of the last two seasons. Copper got good position, hangs, and finishes. There's the athleticism on display of Kalia Copper. Shot clock is off. Indiana would be best served to play for the last shot. Mitchell, though, likes this mismatch onto Dolson. Might have gotten away with a foul there. Maybe a couple of them. The whistle doesn't come. Parker will heave. And that will take us through the first half of play, and Chicago closes it on a 10-3 run. The Sky and Candace Parker lead it by seven at halftime. Great to have Fever fans back in the building. It's Mitchell and Vivian styling up that three. She'll pull up. Here's a three. She's got it. She got it back. That'll be her eighth rebound. She's got it. A foul. Vivian spots free, and Vivian knocks it down. What an effort by Danielle Robinson. There you go, Big T. Kelsey Mitchell and the Indiana Fever looking for a big performance here in the second half to earn their second win of the season. Snap a six-game losing streak. Both of these teams came out on fire in the first half. Chicago at 55% from the field, 70% from three. They hit all 13 free throws they took. But Indiana shooting it well also. 58% from the field, 60% from the three-point line. And they hit 10 of their 13 free throws. So fair to say both of these two coaches, they go into the locker room and they're probably talking defense there at the half. Absolutely. I think that's one of the biggest things we'll probably see within these first four minutes. Um, just the changes of defense or even the pace. I think maybe a pace change too. Um, down there the last two or three minutes of that first half uh, was just kind of back and forth with fouls and a little stagnant. So I think we're going to see a big change of pace along with some big changes on defense. Indiana scores 75 points per game. Chicago 78 points per game. These two teams on pace to be in the triple digits after that first half. Chicago scored a season-high 92 points against Indiana on Wednesday. 
James Wade, the head coach in Chicago. It's his third season on Coach of the Year in his first year with the Sky when they won 20 games and have dealt with injury. They're looking to get back on track in Indiana, hoping their home floor will help turn their season around after a tough start to the season as Mitchell battles inside. Mitchell finds Robinson, who steps into a two. Good luck for Danielle Robinson. Just couldn't get that shot to go. D. Rob had two points. One rebound in the first half as Vandersloot attacks on the other end. That was a great offensive possession, even though they did miss the shot. But just being able to come back, and, and even though they didn't get the two points, you don't want easy baskets like that to, to really humble us. I feel like the first few minutes here of the third half will be really pivotal. Indiana had a second quarter lead. Now down by nine points as Lavender fires and rattles that one in. Well, that's her shot, that deep two. That's her first scoring here this afternoon for Lavender, who played 11 first half minutes, got the starts. Shields attacking downhill. Lavender called with the blocking foul. One of the things that you really are, from a player's standpoint, is just being able to adjust to how the referees are calling the game. And we did see, you know, a few of those little fouls towards the end of that half. But even though that was kind of iffy, just being able to be in position and be in position early. We did call that a shooting foul. And as we touched upon, Chicago is the top free throw shooting team in the league into Shields. An 88% free throw shooter, a rare miss for the fourth year guard out of Tennessee. And she comes up empty on that trip. Mitchell with 11 in the first half, got tangled up with Vandersloot and draws the foul. Mitchell comes up holding that right knee. Mary, I don't think Kelsey's gotten enough credit for is just her durability. She has been available really from the beginning, day number one. No, I agree with that. You know, especially at such a high level, just the day in and day out. But, you know, I have seen her, her work ethic. Uh, from the very beginning, and it doesn't surprise me. But even with all the bumps and the bruises, she is definitely a player to get out there and, and give it her all every time she's on the floor. Indiana turns it over. That's a moving screen on Breland, and that is Breland's fourth. Something to watch here. Breland, who did a little bit of everything in that first half, dealing with some foul trouble as Copper couldn't handle it on the baseline. That's just Chicago's sixth turnover. This is an area where They've really been snake bitten in Chicago. In the early portions of this season, they turn it over 18 times per game. That is a league worst. Just six turnovers here in the early goings of the third quarter. Mitchell working on to Shields. Lavender, deep two. That one short. McCowan the rebound and the putback. And Marianne Stanley making that move with Breland on those four fouls, and it pays off as McCowan. Now at a double digit, she's got 11. And that's her at her very best, I believe. You know, just being able to get in a good position and have the putback um, is, is her bread and butter. Tiffany Mitchell runs into Dolson. Tough angle. It was defended well. And Copper, it leads to a bucket on the other end. Those are the kind of decisions that Mary Ann Stanley wants to clean up. It wasn't a turnover, but it kind of felt like a turnover. Yeah, those are the plays where when it comes to decision making, um, just being able to know and recognize who's down there, when to push the ball, when to attack. Um, and she comes right back. And that is a shot that she, she can make. But just being able to control the pace on just a couple of these bad shots and just being able to get back. Well, I think DeShield thought she heard footsteps from McCowan. She had an unabated trip to the rim, but just left that layup short. Here is that Mitchell attempt underneath. And 
Dolson played her well, got her underneath the hoop. That'll go as a missed shot, but look like a turnover. Daniel Robinson will head to the line for Indiana. Tenth year guard out of Oklahoma. Is the league's top free throw shooter, but she needed every bit of the rim there to keep that mantle. Indiana will check Kaiser Gondrzic back in, and Tiffany Mitchell will come out. Lindsay Allen. Checking in as well, probably the best half we've seen from Allen in a fever uniform. Seven points, four assists, and Robinson, that one won't stay down. Parker able to save it. Gondrzic comes up with it. They'll say no possession change, so shot clock at 10. Allen gets inside, draws the triple team. Shot clock down to seven. Does Gondrzic see it? Lavender will fire. Chicago able to get out in transition here in the second half as Vandersloot sets up Quigley. How many times have we seen that work for Chicago? Quigley just couldn't find the bottom. Wilson down there face guarding McCowan, and McCowan couldn't handle it as Vandersloot came over to help. That was a great defensive rotation from, uh, from the sky. Quigley on the drive. Defended well by McCowan. Getting a little sloppy here. Midway through the third quarter. Chicago's led by as many as nine. Copper called for the foul. On that first half, both offenses really got everywhere they wanted on the floor. And you can tell these two teams spent a lot of time talking about the defensive end as Indiana kind of struggled to get to their spots here in the second half. Yeah, I agree. And I don't know if they realized that uh, Quigley was still down there um, arguing her case and didn't take advantage of the 5 on 4 situation. Robinson, tough angle. Wilson has defended the guards well, but Chicago trying to get back in transition, and Gondrasek took it away. Gondrasek to Robinson, who instead will reset. Lindsay Mitchell not on the floor right now for Indiana as McCowan gathers it in and finishes on the other side of the rim. And none other than Allen making that pass once again. I think uh, that's just been her bread and butter this whole game, and just finding the bigs underneath. Parker open for three. That won't fall. Maybe Marianne Stanley has found something here with that Allen and McCowan duo. Sometimes it takes just a little tinkering to find some chemistry. Allen McCowan, I like that. Parker this time got in on Lavender, comes up with the steal. Parker behind the back, lost the handle. And what is the call here? Pick ball on Chicago. The Fever have cut the deficits down to four midway through the third. Make sure you download the Indiana Fever app for the most up-to-date news, scores, and content. Get your behind-the-scenes fix with photos and videos directly from your phone. Download the app today. It's available on Google Play or on the App Store. The digital team does a terrific job of keeping you abreast on all the comings and goings of the Indiana Fever. And right now, Marianne Stanley running with kind of an interesting grouping. Lavender, Robinson, and then Alan McCowan and Gondrzic off the bench as Indiana has inched their way back within four. They trailed by as many as nine in the third. As they look back inside for McCowan and an offensive foul this time called on Tierra. Second honor, they'll say she pushed off from Dolson trying to get to that pass, which was a couple feet beyond her. Hey, Big T has not been afraid to show the emotion here this afternoon. Not at all. You know, maybe that's just her coming off the bench, you know, and that's her way of giving energy. You know, I, 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 I like it, actually. <laughs> when she's fired up and ready to go, I, I think she plays a lot better. Evans being hounded by Robinson. Hebert on the roll. That one rolls off. And off the 
the ball foul. We'll go against Hebert. That's Hebert's third. I know one thing about this game is it is physical, you know, and just being able to uh, stay poised and make sure that every time you get the opportunity to get the ball, be strong with the ball. I think that's going to be huge for Fever. These two teams scored nearly at will in the first half. The third quarter is 7-4 to four advantage Indiana. They get Lavender on the moving screen. At least two halves couldn't feel more different. I agree. Marianne Stanley and her staff, Steve Smith, Jared Simpson, Vicki Hall, done a nice job covering on the defensive end. They've given up a 56 point first half. Evans with a shot clock down to five, driving on Robinson. Tough shot, it won't go. It's the sixth rebound for Tierra McCowan. Seen this game transition more into the half court as Lavender double teamed underneath. Gondrzic will line up a three. That's way off target. Gondrzic, though, getting some good minutes here on the second half of two straight against Chicago. She played just three minutes on Wednesday as Copper pulls over Allen, and it's an offensive foul. Gondrzic has played eight minutes here today. Let's see how important Kelsey Mitchell is. Those lineups on the floor with Allen and D-Rod, there's just not a ton of shooting. Yeah, I agree, and especially being able to create. The last possession, though, I think they did a really good job of getting it into Lavender, and you could see the storm just swarmed in there, leaving shooters out there, but they just weren't able to, to even put it up. Mitchell is back in along with Jessica Breland. Nursing those four fouls. Something to watch the rest of the way on the former Sky forward. Breland spent four years in Chicago. Shot clock down to four. Godrzic will fire from the other side. McCowan the rebound. The putback and a foul. Way to be in the right place at the right time. But, you know, that, that's her bread and butter. Just being able to get those high balls and, and put them right back in with the and one. That was a great shot. Um, unfortunately, it didn't fall, but I know I have more confidence knowing that our big girls are down there to clean up the mess if I don't make it. So McCowan can bring Indiana within one here from the foul line. She will calmly knock down the free throw. Chicago's gone four and a half minutes without scoring. A 56-point first half, a four-point third quarter. We talked earlier about how the defensive intensity was the thing that needed to change uh, in this half. As that was a great shot. That was it was good defense, but that was a really nice shot. Quickly thought there was a foul and was trying to get a trip to the free throw line and hit the shot anyway. Back inside, McCowan. Oh, she couldn't finish, but got her own rebound. And how about staying with it for Tierra McCowan? And a nice little help up there at the end. Evans inside. Heber draws the foul. And Ruthie Heber, the second year pro out of Oregon, will. Head to the line, and while both offenses have been kind of sputtering here, it's been the offensive glass where Indiana's been able to do their damage. That's been Tierra McCowan's sweet spot. 18 points, eight rebounds for McCowan. It would be easy, you miss an easy look like that to be frustrated, but you really have to give McCowan a lot of credit for staying with it there and earning two the hard way. You really do, and we have seen her you know, miss little buttons, which is a natural part of the game. Everybody does it. But, you know, we've seen her, you know, hang her head or be upset or come down. She might not be as aggressive on defense. And I haven't seen any of that from McCowan today. That was the fifth foul on Jessica Breland. She's picked up five in 13 minutes. So Marianne Stanley has to check her back out. And Lauren Cox will come in. Cox had a nice four-minute stretch there in the first half. Kelsey 
Mitchell's yet to take a shot here in half number two. Say Cox was held on the roll there. That was a big call because Chicago had set sail for the other end. But once again, Indiana getting into the penalty, getting to the free throw line. Chicago's taken 17, Indiana's taken 16. So not necessarily been an advantage there for Indiana, but they've gotten themselves into the penalty in each of the first three quarters. And Cox, a 73% free throw shooter, had been held scoreless in three straight games before this one. But a five-point afternoon, and she's done that in four minutes. Indiana closes back within a point. I think it's so important for every player to do their part, whether that be on offense, on defense, and Lauren Cox is really showing her part today. Stevens had it blocked there by Cox. And she kept saying, I don't feel 100%. I don't feel like I have my normal quickness. And that's starting to show here as you see Cox get a little quicker, a little bit more agile. And look, defense has always been her calling card, the two-time defensive player of the year in the Big 12. And they got Gondrasic there on the foul, fighting through that screen. And now Chicago is into the penalty, and they will send Ali Quigley to the free throw line. Now the ball wasn't in yet, so and away from the play foul is the ruling there. So just the one technical free throw for Quigley. Fever really needs to stay with this intensity on defense. They called her for the foul early, but I, I like to deny. You know, she's up there, she's pressuring, she's talking, using the defensive of, of keys to get, um, uh, you know, herself in a good position. Even though she made that shot, I really like how the, the defensive pressure is right now for the Fever. Three-point possession there for Ali Quigley gives Chicago a little bit of breathing room as Mitchell turns the corner, gets inside, and had that deflected. Good defense from the Shields. Kelsey Mitchell still has not taken a shot here in the second half. The Shields goes right at Mitchell, who took it right back. And now Gondrasic running the floor. Gondrasic couldn't finish. Mitchell straightaway three, book it. I think that's her favorite spot on the floor. She knew that was going in before it even let go. That was a, a great offensive rebound, a great attack, a great offensive rebound to lead to the open shot. Evans stepped back on Cox. Evans leaves it short. And they will say Allen touched it last, and then Cheryl Flores changes her mind. Indiana basketball. Beaver, who have held Chicago to 11 points in the third quarter. Chance to take a lead here. About eight seconds between the clocks. Cox, shot fakes the three. Shot clock down to five. Allen steps into a three. Nobody picked up the shield. Stevens lost the handle. A really nice defensive third quarter for Indiana. They hold the sky to 11. And that seven-point halftime deficit has been trimmed to one. Indiana looking for their second win of the season. We will head to the fourth when we return. In celebration of LGBTQ Pride Plus, presented by Deloitte, the WNBA will collaborate with GLSEN and Fanatics on an exclusive line of Pride Apparel, including Fanatics branded WNBA t-shirts. All WNBA proceeds will benefit GLSEN, and fans can purchase the shirts at WNBAstore.com as we continue to celebrate Pride Month here in the month of June. Indiana looking for win number two. Parker step back three. Parker had a big first half, 15 points, has not scored here in half number two. 
As Indiana looks for their first lead of the second half. Gondrasik's already played double-digit minutes. And Dolson there called for the foul. And that is the fourth foul on Dolson. Freeland on the bench right now with five. Indiana, they were already into the front court, so that is a backcourt violation. I think we haven't had too many of those mental mistakes this afternoon, but that's certainly one of them. Yeah, a little, little rookie mistake. You know, in college, you're able to, no matter what side of the ball you know, you're know you on, you can still throw it over half court. But once you come to those pros, it's one of the big rule. What a great pass by the rookie, as I'm talking about her. Yeah, she makes up for it and gets the steal. Good ball movement. And Cox puts the fever in front. Cox gets the assignment of Parker. Not an easy task. Parker backing in up top. Dolson. Has to be a big confidence booster for Lauren Cox. She's come out and played the best of her season so far to date. A lot of pressure in the backcourt by Chicago. Allen backing in on Vandersloot, puts on the moves. Vandersloot stayed with her, and Allen hit it anyway. Great defense, even better offense. You know, she was. Looked like she was uh, didn't know exactly what to do, but just being able to create for herself and, and just kind of free herself up there, that was that was a great shot. Vandersloot on the other end, turns the corner, draws the foul, and can tie it at the free throw line here. As Lavender will check in for Lauren Cox. What a great use of the body just from the vet. You know, she's probably seen that. Uh, game, in, game in and game out, just being able to use her body and kind of contort her way in a position to use the glass. Chicago really dialing up the pressure here in the fourth quarter. You see that full court pressure on. Allen able to get it in bounds and break it down. Gondrasen, tough shots. Touch that last will stay with Indiana. Andrzejewski is 0 of 5 from the floor, but she has three steals. And it's just that eye test. You're kind of looking for her, and I think she's certainly passing it despite the fact that a shot isn't falling. And she's, she's getting some good looks, and I think she should continue to, uh, to stay aggressive on offense. Allen, tough look again, and this time she draws a foul. So Lindsay Allen really had it all going. Here this afternoon, 9.6 assists in 19 minutes. Allen averages just three points and two assists per game. She's had Vandersloot all over her, but hit that earlier shot, draws the foul here. And Allen, a 73% free throw shooter, will go to the line. Allen has really just been the name of this game today with her intensity on offense and defense and being able to find the open person um, as she knocks down this free throw here. It's just such a, a relief to see um, another guard outside of Mitchell's um, stepping up and kind of taking on the, the good guard play. Anderson, dangerous cross-court pass. Allen able to knock it out of there. And they said the Shields touched it last. That's what I'm talking about right there. Just come down, hit a free throw or two, and get right back on defense and, and make the big play. Andrew Sludu is arguably the best passer this league has ever seen. That is a dangerous pass for anybody, but really don't question anything she does. She's so brilliant. First player to ever average double-digit assists last year. Allen steps into a three. That one is short. That was a good offensive possession by the Fever. Even though the shot didn't go in, she felt in rhythm. I think she's really feeling it. Parker has a big mismatch on Mitchell. They repost for her. Lavender does a nice job to help out on her. Vandersloot on the drive and swatted out of there by Big T. That really looked like she just had an open lane to the basket there, but 
it, it looks like T is all over the place, making sure that she's just being a force to be reckoned with down there in the, in the paint. And talk about the communication. I thought that was so impressive by Lavender to get over. And as they reposted, as Copper gets that one off target. As they look to repost Parker, Lavender able to get there and help. And Parker goes down on the floor. No whistle, and Parker is slow to get up. Indiana with a four on five. Mitchell leans in, can't get it to go. McCowan on the putback, she is fouled. But all eyes on the other end of the floor here, and Candace Parker. Here's a look at what happened. Just lost the handle and came down holding that right knee. Parker going to stay in the game. It was an ankle injury that kept her out earlier in the year. Looked like she slipped a little bit uh, as she was turning, uh, did the behind the back move. Just kind of foot just slipped on the, the floor there. But you talked about the repost of Park Parker before uh, she went down. Um, not only did you have to, you know, communicate that we need to switch while the ball is in the air, you also have to trust your teammate that she's going to be there or that she hears you. It's a lot of things going on in that play where it's, that's just the, the chemistry of the, of the Fever team tonight. Cowan, as brilliant as she's been, has left some points at the charity stripe. Just two of seven from the free throw line. Copper fires. And Lavender, oh, she's going to be called for the foul here. I'll tell you, we are not on the floor like we typically are, but in live action, I thought that looked pretty clean. I agree. As Lavender just trying to box. It looks like Dolson kind of had her arm there a little bit, and now she's coming up. You know, she just got the short end of that stick. Parker on the drive, and they'll get Lavender here for back-to-back -back fouls. So now five on Lavender, five on Breland. The Fever play big as it is. They've got Tierra McCowan on the floor, so it's not like they are going to be short on bigs. But you do lose your options to be creative if you're Marianne Stanley as you deal with foul trouble here. little bit like a frustration uh, foul there and just kind of went up and took a chance and you just have to make sure that you stay smart and stay poised in, in situations like that especially with a, a great player like, uh, like Parker. That's her first miss free throw. Chicago at 85 percent now. Parker with 15 points, 12 rebounds, 4 assists. She has filled up the stat sheets. Her third game as a member of her hometown Chicago Sky. She splits the pair and pulls us even. Andrzej has played 15 minutes. Stock clock down to four. Allen back inside. McCowan powers through Parker, but put that one up too strong. And DeShields on the drive, defended by Cox. That won't fall. Parker tries to step in. Wouldn't get enough of a handle on it. We are even at 71 between the Fever and the Sky. Dear McCowan with a double-double. It's come off the bench this afternoon. 18 points, 10 rebounds. This is the version of McCowan that when Indiana gets her, they have a completely different dynamic on both sides of the floor. I agree. And just being able to find her early or get her involved early or get some easy putbacks early, I really think that just defines the rest of the game for, for her. Just one starter on the floor right now for Indiana. It's Kelsey Mitchell as Breland and Jantel Lavender dealing with some foul trouble. Mitchell fires. The 
has hit her previous two from three-point range. She has 14 points. And the Shields on her for a lot of tonight. The Shields currently on the bench. Parker backing in on Cox, sees the double team. Copper straight away three. It's the fourth offensive rebound for Chicago. Parker couldn't handle it. They'll now turn it over for the 16th time. That is 11 second half turnovers on the sky in a quarter and a half. And we talked about that, that fever pressure and just kind of getting up and getting some deflections or kind of making it tough for the guards to see. And that's what we want to see from the fever. Mitchell trying to pick her spot. Allen with a shot clock down to five. Copper is on her. Allen on the drive, pulls up. Tough look. And Allen knocks it down. Lindsay Allen with a 12-point afternoon, hitting tough shot after tough shots. Yeah, she's really feeling it. And you can just tell by, by her stroke. Every time she gets the ball, she's on attack mode. Uh, and she's just going in there and, and putting it in. The sky will keep it. You're going to need some ice baths after this one for McCowan, Dolson, Parker. This has been quite the physical battle in the post. That's another dynamic that McCowan brings you, though, that physicality. And it just makes life difficult for the other team. I agree 100% because just being able to be that type of caliber player, she's already taken up space in the paint offensively and defensively. Uh, it, it's tiring to box her out every single time. You know, it's tiring trying to score over her or, or defend her. So it's just been uh, so good to see her, her uh, take up the space that she is. Candace Parker nearly had a three-point play. That one just rolled out on her. Parker will go right back to the free throw line and a chance to tie this game. Parker is six of seven from the free throw line. A career 75% shooter. Two-time MVP, a WNBA champion. Parker's four assists have moved her into 12th all-time WNBA assists. What an honor, you know, just at such a high level, being able to have multiple categories and, and uh, it would be a top 20, top 15, and all of them. That's, that's just an honor. That is the fourth foul on Chicago, so the Fever will enter the penalty. Soon foul. Indiana, by the way, has lost nine straight when they've been trailing, heading into the fourth. A chance to break that skid. Here with a strong final four minutes. Godrzejczyk bouncing, McCowan. Offensive foul. Well, that was great position. You know, she, she saw that the ball was being advanced to the other side early, so she went ahead and established her position, and it just looks like it was just a turnaround. <laughs> there was uh, Candace Parker all over her. Quigley, corner three. Oh, it was halfway down on her. And Indiana catches a break. Allie Quigley. One of three from the three-point line. Oh, look at this group. Marion Stanley's running on the floor. A lot of contact. No whistle. And Vandersloot takes it coast to coast. And that's their name of their game. They like that transition deep. Uh, Good transition offense from a good trans uh, defensive possession. So just that's their that's their bread and butter. The sky lead it by two. The final 328 when we return to the fairground. Fever fans, we need your help. We want your feedback on this afternoon's streaming experience. Visit feverbasketball.com slash survey to help us improve your fever game day. A strong close would certainly 
Help with that. Indiana down by two. Mitchell on the drive. Cut off by Stevens. Gets inside. The defense from Chicago. Cox with a shot clock down to seven. Battling with Stevens. Cox goes up. Had it deflected. Shot clock down to four. And she caught her own miss. It's a travel. As she continues to get more and more comfortable, just, you know, I like her going back to the basket and just being able to go finish at the rim and just kind of power through uh, as, as we see the development of Cox. Parker driving on Cox, puts it up, can't finish. McCallan has her 12th rebound. First time this season, it looks like Lindsey Allen going to close out the game at point guard. Danielle Robinson on the bench. Tiffany Mitchell has checked in for the first time since the third quarter. Once again, the shot clock running low on Indiana. Mitchell sees it, pulls up, and ties the game. And she has to have fresh legs right now, and just being able to have the bench come in um, and, and you know, help with some of those minutes that she usually plays. You know, I think this is her go time right now. Vandersloot left open. And now Parker with the tip in underneath. Indiana got out of position on the defensive end. And the two-time MVP puts Chicago back in front. Mitchell, tough look. Hits it anyway. It's a deep two for Mitchell, and they want to immediately look at this. This is power that they have given the WNBA officials to do is they can immediately look if this is a two or a three and not wait for the next dead ball. And I think that's such a good move by the league because whatever they determine here is so pivotal to potentially the sky strategy. And that certainly was a two. That should take but eight seconds. And it does. Indiana, they hit some, their guards have hit some tough shots here in the second half. Yeah, I, I love it. I, I really, especially with the season that they've had, with just struggling offensively with their shooting, just coming out here and, you know, our new home for, for right now and just being able to set a statement here. Quigley will fire and hit. Big shot, Allie Quigley. She has been doing that. 13 years, and the Sky go back in front by three. Mitchell spins inside. Mitchell, tough look, couldn't finish. McCowan couldn't pull it down as Quigley got in there. And Indiana charged with the foul, and the Sky are into the penalty. That was a good attack by Mitchell and trying to make something happen and just those loose ball fouls, you know, those are the calls that you don't like to see happen because you are being so aggressive. Uh, but unfortunately, that's just how the game goes sometimes. Quickly miss keeps it a one possession game. This is such a tough call if you're a head coach. That bench has been so terrific for you. 42 points from Indiana's bench, which scored just nine on Wednesday. But now you've got a little bit of a different cast and crew that you typically close the game with. Yeah, every possession counts right now, just being able to move the ball, have a good possession, and kind of transfer that on to, to defense. Freeland looking inside. McCowan hauls it in and lays it in. Great big to big pass, finish there. Just that high-low is something that I know that they drill over and over, especially with the with a big player like Big T, and just being able to feel comfortable and make that pass. That was a great pass by Brittany. Vandersloot gets the switch to Breland. Copper inside Parker. Shot clock down to three. Quigley on the drive, off balance. Oh, she hit a tough shot. Allie Quigley delivering for the sky in the final two minutes. Tough shot after tough shot. I know she's been in this situation plenty of times before, just being able to have that confidence. Cowan couldn't finish on the other end. And now the Sky with a four-point lead. With 
36 seconds left. Can't defend that any better. Ali Quigley is a big time shot maker. Coming off the bench here for most of the start of her 13th season. Indiana electing not to foul. Not clock down to four. Parker on the drive, the left hand leaves the bank shot shorts. Now Indiana has to hurry and they turn it over. Stevens comes up with the steal and Chicago will be able to dribble this one out. A spike from Quigley as Chicago finishes with the final four points tonight. A 5-0 run. The final five points come from Ali Quigley. Indiana loses an opportunity to earn their second win. Marianne Stanley clearly not pleased with that lack of foul call. I think she is frustrated with off of that McCowan rebound. Yeah, I think she wanted the timeout and they weren't looking or they just just missed it. So that is she got her. They got to fire it up right now. She is she wants to make her case on that one. Well, Chicago Sky who up to this point have lost every close game they played in. A big moment for James Wade's group. Here's this afternoon's heart pounding moment courtesy of Ascension St. Vincent. What a game it was from Lindsay Allen. The hesitation on Courtney Vandersloot. Ascension St. Vincent heart pounding moments as the Chicago Sky come away with their fourth win, executing late here from Indy. Indiana Fever Basketball is brought to you by Ascension St. Vincent, listening to you, caring for you. And by Ortho Indy, official orthopedic provider of the Indiana Fever. The final score this afternoon, 83 to 79. The Fever returned to action Tuesday night at 7 for the first of two straight against the defending WNBA champs, the Seattle Storm. We'll have coverage for you streaming live on Facebook and feverbasketball.com. Tickets, though, are available at feverbasketball.com slash tickets. For director Jamie Burns, producer Matt Scott, for Bria Goss and our entire crew, I'm Pat Boylan. Thanks for watching. We will talk to you on Tuesday.